it's Margie, and today I'm doing a movie review of the 1992 film A League of Their Own. Now, before I get into this review, I just want to apologize for the terrible lighting, but I can't do anything about it. So, here we go. This film starred, I'm sure many of you already know, Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Lori Petty, Madonna, John Levitz, David Strathairn, Gary Marshall, Freddie Simpson, Anna Elizabeth Ramsey, Bill Pullman, Megan Cavanaugh, Rosie O'Donnell, Tracy Reiner, Biddy Stram, Don Davis, Renee Coleman, Ann Kuzak, and Eddie Jones. It was directed, of course you know who by, Miss Penny Marshall, cinematography by Miro Slate Onan Brasek, score by Hans Zimmer, edited by George Bowers, and the story is by Kim Wilson and Kelly Condyle. I um, hope I'm saying that right, with a screenplay by Lowell Gons and Babalu Mandel. Okay, guys, so the basic plot for this movie is that um, basically it's the story of women's baseballs in the, for in the 40s and 50s, and it focuses on Gina Davis's character who is going to, like, a reunion with all of her baseball-playing friends, and when she gets there, she starts reminiscing, and it goes in flashback and tells the whole story of, like, all... Of her, basically pretty much of her and her sister who's played by Lori Petty um, and how they got into the sport and the league and what goes on in the league and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm going to jump right into performances. There's no particular order here. I'm just going down the list. But, of course, we're going to start with Mr. Tom Hanks. I thought he did a fantastic job. Um, I thought he was great. I thought he did a really good job. He plays the manager of the girls' um, baseball team, and he plays kind of a drunken has-been. And I thought he did really, really well in this role. Not one of his best roles, um, but, you know, he's had so many good ones that, you know, obviously this is probably not the best, but I thought he was great. I don't think there was anything more that he could have done with it. I thought his dialogue and everything was very funny, and his delivery was great. And it was so funny as I'm watching the film, um, of course, we're all sitting there. When the girl starts to cry, we're all sitting there knowing what's coming. And I'm like, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And Tom Hanks is like, there's no crying in baseball. I'm like, yes, there's not. I mean, it was just, I don't know, it was funny. I was like, here it comes. It was, that was kind of cool. Um, Gina Davis, I thought, was really great. I felt she kind of tapered off in the end, at, around the end of the movie. And... I don't know. I just didn't think she she didn't quite get there. In a couple of scenes where she should have been a little more emotional, particularly between Lori Petty and herself, but um, on the whole, great, really great job by her. Lori Petty was great, really, really super. Um, Madonna was good in this film. I've heard from several people that it's actually her best role that she's done. So she was good um, in this role, and she plays kind of like a saucy. Uh, loose woman <laughs> on the team, and uh, I thought she was I thought she was good in that role. John Levitt's great. David Strathairn, I'm probably not saying that right. Great job, really, really great job. Absolutely loved him. Um, as many of you know, he was in Lincoln, which I've done a previous review of. Great, absolutely great job. He was great. Um, Gary Marshall, Freddie Simpson, Anna Elizabeth Ramsey, uh, Tracy Reiner, Biddy Schramm, John Davis, Renee Coleman, Ann Kuzak, Eddie Jones, all great. They all did great. I saved out um, two or three people. That is Bill Pullman. I thought he was good, but I thought that this wasn't any, of a challenge, any bit of a challenge for him. He had a very small role, but I would have liked to have seen a little more in a couple of his scenes. But when it, when it really mattered, he had one really emotional scene. He through. So I thought he did well. Uh, Megan Cavanaugh, good. Really great job. Rosie O'Donnell was good in this film. She was. Um, I think she was, you know, pretty much typecast, but I thought she did well, and um, her emotional scene, she, she delivered. So great for her. Um, moving on to direction. I thought the directing in this was good. However, nothing really completely amazed me about the directing. I mean, I thought she did a really good job orchestrating everything and getting all the performers to do well, but again, there wasn't anything that I was just, like, amazed over, and I know the Penny Marshall fans are, like, ready to, you know, slip my throat, but um, 
it was okay. It wasn't bad. It just didn't really amaze me. On to the cinematography. Again, nothing really stood out um, too much to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all these, all these people that have worked have done, you know, have done a lot of movies. Like, you know, Penny Marshall directed Big and Awakenings and, you know, all these people have you know, are working probably today, most of them, if, um, if they're not retired, and so, yeah, they they all have had successful careers, I would say, um, but, you know, nothing really grabbed me um, particularly about this. The score by Hans Zimmer was great. It was good. I would have liked to seen him, though, for more of the tender moments, tone it down just a little more. Some of the score... Um, I'm talking about the score with the movie. I'm not talking about the score by itself. The score by itself is great. It's really, really lovely. So great job, Hans Zimmer. But in some of those like more tender moments, there was a little too much going on, and I would have liked to just seen him just cut it down to like maybe one or two instruments and just a simple little melody to make everything really tender and wrap up really nice. Um, so I felt like he kind of failed a little bit on that. But everything else was great. Editing was good. Um, it does kind of slow down in the last 30 minutes, but it's the last 30 minutes. And I felt like the last 30 minutes were probably the weakest of the film. I kind of just felt like everybody was getting tired. I don't know if this was shot in sequence or not, but people were just kind of eh and a little sloppy. And, um, well, I mean, the last 15 minutes was good because that's where you come out of the flashback. But I'm talking about, like, the last 15 to 30 minutes of the flashback, um, it's just not really that super, it wasn't for me, I was, it definitely kind of declines around the end, but, um, anyway, I thought the editing was great, I didn't think there were, there were very many useless scenes, I would have liked to have seen a couple things cut a little more short, but that's just being nitpicky, um, the writing in this was great. Great, really super writing. I loved all the um, thought the humor was really good as far as dialogue. The dialogue in this is killer, y'all. Especially the one-liners, they're really really funny. Um, so great job to the writers, um, Lowell Gons and Babalu Mandel on that. Great. There was a couple things that I was like, okay, maybe we could have admitted this. We could have done this a little differently aside from the dialogue. I mean, I thought all the dialogue was great. I'm just talking about, like, you know, scenes where, like, you know, actions are happening, you know, and I don't know whose choice that was or whatever, but there was a couple of those that bothered me a little bit. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm just being nitpicky. I thought it was, I thought everybody that worked on this film did really well as a whole. Now, let's get into this parent's guide. Language. Pretty pretty steep for a PG movie. This movie is rated PG, and I was extremely surprised when I learned that, given all the language in it. No Fs, 1B, 4 Hs, um, 8 Ds, 6 Ss, and 5 As. So, yeah, it's not clean as a whistle, but, of course, there's wor films with a lot worse language. Um... Let's see, lots of drinking and smoking. As I mentioned, Tom K Hanks character is a drunkard, basically, for a lot of the film. So there's all of that. Um, the girls are puffing away on cigs, but, I mean, it's not like drugs, drugs. It's just like nicotine. So um, there is some potty humor in this movie, sexual content. A pretty good bit of sexual dialogue. Yeah, and there's some cleavage. And there's, like, scenes with the girls in their dressing rooms and, like, their slips and, you know, stuff like that and their bras. So just be aware of that. But there's not really any, like, sexual, sexual content. Just some passionate kissing. And um, that's basically, it. again, sexual references, sexual mentions, that kind of thing. So not your worst of films in that area. But, you know, I just wanted you to be aware. Violence and gore. Not really any violence. A couple of the girls get in a fight, and this one girl slides into a base and literally ruins her leg, and they show that, and it is really nasty looking. But it didn't bother me. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just like, it's just the slide and the bruise, and it's all, it's very realistic. It was actually really, really greatly done. Whoever did that bruise, you, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Wrapping this thing up, how many stars? Three out of five, maybe three and a half out of five. 
Would I watch it again? Mm, in a long time. Like 10 years from now. Or, you know, if my friend was, like, dying to watch it or something, then I'd sit through it again. But it's not one I'm going to seek out. It's not one that I would buy to own. I mean, it's just kind of like, eh. You know, so, um, yeah, it didn't really it didn't really grab me. But I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was very humorous. I thought it's definitely worth a one-time watch. So, and, I, and Tom is great. Gene is great on the whole. Um, everybody in the film is good, and everybody that worked on the film I felt was good, especially the writers. The writing is great. The dialogue is killer in this movie. It's really good. Um, and not like killer, killer, but like I'm talking about like the one-liners and stuff. There wasn't a lot of cheesy stuff. So standing out for the writers for not making it a total schmooze fest, which it could have been. And it is in some places, but for the whole, it's not. I do want to say one more thing before I close, guys. This movie is very predictable. At least it was for me. I mean, I was watching it with a friend, and I was telling my friend, I was like, I've never seen the movie before, and I was like, this is going to happen. Watch this, and guess what? This is going to happen. And my friend was telling me the same things. Like, we both knew what was going to happen, what was going to go down. Very, very predictable. But if you don't mind a movie like that, then you'll probably enjoy this one. Anyway, guys, this has been my movie review of the 1992 film A League of Their Own. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.